Hello everyone and welcome to the bus boycott party. This event was held in Hensworth, Birmingham on Saturday the 20th of August 2021. This is a family event where you get to enjoy live music from Black Voices and the bus boycott musical. The National Express West Midlands even lent a retro bus for the occasion. The bus boycott party is inspired by the Bristol bus boycott, which started on the 30th of April 1963. Its aim was to denounce the color ban in the Bristol Omnibus Company, who was only allowing white people to work as bus drivers and conductors. In 1960, Bristol Caribbean community represented about 3,000 people, who were largely confined to the deprived samples area a place that sustained a lot of bomb damage during the war. A couple of years earlier, in 1955, the Transport and General Workers Union had passed a resolution that colored workers should not be employed as bus crews. They cited safety concerns as well as fears that black workers would mean reduced working hours and overtime, therefore reduced wages. After several months of negotiations, a mass meeting of 500 bus workers agreed to end the color ban, and on the 20th of August 1963, it was announced that there would be no more racial discrimination in the employment of bus crews. Less than a month later, Ragbir Singh, a Sikh, became the first non-white bus conductor in Bristol. <laughs> Nothing comes to violence, no nothing ever to Thank you. 
possible to get inside, like to go? Uh, yeah, you can carry on. Around. Okay. You stop. I have to help them in there. Okay. It's such a big step. <laughs> So that's what you have to do, you have to actually to get, like, to get, to get for me to get in here after the left foot there, hold yeah. there, there, right foot oh there my and God. put yourself in. Wow, there's a lot of uh, exercise. Yeah, like, it's just too big for the children, yeah. so I have to help them in. So that's what they used to do uh, in back in the time. Yeah. Like they had to wow. Yeah. So a lot of exercise. some of the bigger guys would really struggle to get through the narrow entrance. Yeah, like. <laughs> So do you still drive this type of bus? Yeah. Oh, that's just the window. That's just the window, yeah. If you press that bottom button, see the two light switches, press the button underneath. No, to, the, to, the, to your left by your shoulder. As you press that button, put the bottom button. <laughs> oh, the, head, the headlamp is off. I'll switch it back off again now, because I have to save the electricity. I'm, 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 <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that, that's just where the steering wheel is fastened to. It doesn't do anything. It's just the, that's the steering wheel fastened. Oh, there's, no there's no assistance. You, you literally have to pull the wheel around with the steering wheel. There's no power assistance at all. <laughs> so where? Um, so this bus dates from uh, 1954. Okay. Yeah, it's 67 years old now. Nothing at work at the moment. So I've got everything switched off. <laughs>
So why the men were upstairs? Is it because it was difficult for the ladies to like? Well, yeah, upstairs was because a lot of men smoked in those days. Ah, oh, you could you could smoke you in there. You could still the... smoke upstairs, okay. but you couldn't downstairs. So oh, okay. most of the workmen went up to have the cigarette, and then obviously in the dirty work clothes they would. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so they had the leather upstairs so it was easy to wipe all the dirt off. Oh, okay. So this bus, where did it go? This it like the 11, it, like the, the... Yeah, it was, it was just general use in Birmingham, so it could appear on any route in Birmingham. Okay. What is this thing? That's the handbrake. You pull that and it locks it locks the wheel so the bus doesn't move, so don't release it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, give me your ticket now. <laughs> See the driver didn't have to deal with tickets because you had a separate conductor on the back in those days. Okay, there, so there were two people. Two working people on together. every bus, yeah. Yeah, the driver literally just drove the bus and the conductor collected the fares and looked okay. after the back. And how much was it at the time, the fare? Um, well, it, there's a, um, a sign on the back that's got for the night service, which is 10 d Now, 10 d is the equivalent of about four pence now in, in, oh, okay. in decimal currency. Okay. So do you have any other information, important information about this bus? Yeah, that one. That's me. Oh, yeah. I said we, we still hire it. It still works. We still hire it out for weddings okay. and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, sometimes I see uh, this type of bus like around Mosley and Kingsley. Yeah. Well, it lives at Yardy Wood, so that's why you see it over that yeah. way. <laughs> I bought it from Yardy Wood this morning. Oh, okay. And is it like difficult to, um, to um, take care of? It is because obviously the parts are 67 years old, so getting hold of the parts is not easy nowadays. Oh, okay. we, we have to make some of them. Um, I like your driver's seat. So how do you when we're getting inside uh, inside the bus? Because it's quite like it's quite um, no, the step is quite high. Yeah, hey. it's. Hey. Well, you mean the driver's seat or the bus in general? The, the bus, bus the in bus general, there. yeah. It, it was just out, out of the Like a, like a little tub leg. The driver was expected to get close to the curb. I mean, there's a sign. There's a sign there giving the driver instructions that give hand signals, stop and start smoothly, use brake gently, pull into the curb at stops. To, that's obviously to help people with the big step. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So when you were younger, did you see this type of bus? Or yeah, right, like I, I travelled on these as a child. And then, okay. you know, I started so what's your memory of that? Of that um, time? Basically just, they were the old buses of the day, so yeah. it, it was just... Berry off the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I, these finished when I was 13, so I could just about remember them up okay. till I was about 13. And then, uh, I started working for them at 16, so I've been there 43 years now. Oh, okay, it's a long time. So what yeah. uh, line do you do? I don't drive full time now, I, do, I work in the offices. Oh, okay. But, uh, but before, what line did you drive? I, I was a driver at Warsaw Garage, so I used Warsaw. to do all the routes around Warsaw. Okay. And what do you like about uh, driving a, uh, the bus? It's just a job that as long as you ignore idiots, <laughs> you're, you're your own boss, you can just drive around, do the job properly, management get, keep off your back if you're doing the job yeah. properly. You ain't got anyone there telling you what to do all the time. It's, yeah. uh, you've just got to learn to ignore the idiots, basically, who you carry around. <laughs> and as long as you can ignore idiots, it's a, decent, it's a good job. <laughs>
So are you here until what time? Five o'clock. Okay. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. And a song called Give Me Cricket. Here we go. discuss a matter which I am sure you will agree is of great importance. What do you say? There is an incident going on here in Bristol that could affect the lives of many of our fellow West Indians. Your visit here could not be more timely. Hey boy, how you talk so? There is a boycott. What do you say? You say boycott! Oh, boycott! That boy can't bat. No, not Jeff boycott. There is a bus boycott. Milton was caught. Their doom it was the harbinger. When I fall, I bend it over. I feel like a pig in the clover. And the force says, Oh no, with his head in his hand. When I say that, all right. Gentlemen, we are boycotting their buses. Why that? Because they will not let us work on their buses. That can't be right. That is most indeed not right. Uh, so you want, what do you want from us? Support us. Fight with us. What they're doing is just not cricket. Oh. We, we not love not cricket. We love our country and the yoga to the wicked. Gentlemen, we need oh, you. you can take your coffee and stick it. Will you stand with us? Cricket, 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 cricket. Oh, for God's sake. Coming from Kingston to Bristol Town Politics is not for me. Politics is not for me. The thing I love is 
Cricket. gentlemen thank you so much um, that was literally the world premiere of that song so thank you for being here for a sort of mini premiere of five of the numbers from uh, Roy and my new musical my name is Tim Sutton I'm the composer and lyricist and Roy is the librettist and we're very grateful um, to all the uh, supporters here and we're very grateful for you for turning out to have a, a listen to these songs we're going to bust on with the next song which is called seems very far away and this is sung in the club sticks and stones where you will hear that opening number um, a lady steps forward and everybody and she's known as auntie uh, everyone says please auntie sing your song sing your song and she goes no i don't want to sing your song sing your song they push her on she goes okay i'll sing your song and so here we have the amazing adaya henry to sing seems very far away give it up
is very far away. When I think of Kingston, brother, it seems very far away. Mist clings to the blue mountains. This world's round. Medea now as she sings uh, a song sung by the character of Lorraine that Roy mentioned. So Lorraine is based on a lady called Joyce who we, we met when we were doing some research in Bristol a couple of years ago before the pandemic and uh, Lorraine is a 15 year old girl who's recently come over from uh, Jamaica and she's looking to find her way in Bristol and eventually she finds Paul Stevenson who inspires her to activism. Um, so here is a day of singing the I Want song from the musical, Longing to Belong. Thank you. 
projects that are going to be happening after today because this is the launch but this is a whole body of work and we can't wait to see what's going to happen so what do we have in store <laughs> so who's taking the 74 bus around here hands up okay good so everyone has that particular bus rate that they have from their childhood that they've got familiar memories with so we will be working with Transport for West Midlands, National Express as well, and so the Soho Road bid. And it's just about, the board, we're taking over the bus stops on Soho Road and converting them into mini galleries. And the idea is that we will be working with our wonderful artist curator, Nilipa Yasmin, who was here at the workshops this morning. Um, but she'll be working with community groups and basically redecorating them. Every single bus stop will be a sponge that reflects that bit of Soho Road. We've got our first one and it's around the corner from on Soho Avenue. Take your pictures, it looks great. And if you're melanated, the yellow filter looks really good as well. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the other one, um, we've got, oh my God, my brain's just... Jane, Jane, where is Jane? In there. Jane is in there. <laughs> she's the wonderful person with pink hair and she's got she's basically travelled around Ladywood and North Birmingham having conversations about what does protest and activism look like in twenty twenty one. Because if I say the word protest and activism, visually you think of people moving, placards and banners. So if you go in there you can see the first of her banner strands in particular. And that programme is called We're Still Here. Um, who's that? <laughs> We're also developing a new heritage trail with Black Heritage Walks Network, who are based at that tent over there, and over here, which have a poetry trail app. So with communities based around Handsworth, they're looking for stories about migration. Uh, for example, you might say, who went to school in Handsworth? Put up your hand. Okay, so they want to hear from you guys to talk about your teachers, the lessons, Miss over here. <laughs> all, the, all, of the, all of the stories that you might have and they will pin it on a map so that you can have an audio version of it as you walk around and you'll also be able to do the physical tour as well. Brilliant. And how can people find out more about the program and join you on the journey? So you're going to see dotted around on some of the tables the bit.ly link if you want to stay in touch as well. Alternatively, if you just follow China Play Theatre on social media and go on ChinaPlateTheatre.com. Brilliant. Can we give our lovely producers a big round of applause, please? Woo! Amazing. So we are all here because of Bus Boycott, which is going to be a musical coming very, very soon, uh, developed by China Plate and will be produced also with uh, the Birmingham Hippodrome as well. And to introduce some more about this lovely musical, we're going to have one of the country's lead dramatists coming up on the stage to introduce the project. Can we give Roy Williams a round of applause, please? Keep going, keep going, he's, he's walking. <laughs> so well. <laughs> 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 
Hello, good afternoon. Um, just going to give you a quick rundown of what the show is about. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, the story of the British, Bristol bus boycott is centred on an historical event that took place in the city of Bristol in May 1963 as a citywide protest against the refusal of the Bristol Omnibus Company to employ black and Asian drivers and conductors on its buses. It was led by Paul Stevenson and a group of other young West Indian men calling themselves the West Indian Development Council. They were joined by white students from the university and prominent figures like Howard Wilson and Louis Constantine, Leary Constantine, the High Commissioner for Trinidad and Tobago. Opposing the boycott, alongside the, the, the Omnibus Company, was the Transport and General Workers the Union, despite the fact that they, they had been vocal in its opposition to apartheid in South Africa. But ultimately, the boycott was successful. Five months after it began, the colour bar was lifted, and on September the 17th, Ragbear Singh became the first non-white conductor on the bus in Bristol. The boycott is often credited with having laid the foundations for the Race Relations Act of 1965 and 1968, which made racial discrimination unlawful in public places in the UK. Our story focuses on two central characters, one real, Paul Stevenson, and one fictional, a 15-year-old girl, 15 year old girl called Lorraine. Paul was a youth worker and inspired Lorraine to become an activist and find her voice as a young black woman. This will be a warm-hearted family musical but at its core, we have a vital social message about the importance of acceptance, standing up for yourself, and allyship. As such, it feels fiercely relevant today in the context, in the context of the Windrush scandal and the hostile environment created by Brexit. Additionally, this is a story of activism driven by young people, and that resonates strongly in the world of youth-led protests like Extinction Rebellion, Black Lives Matter, and Me Too. Thank you.